The greatest evidence for the Big Bang did not come from the relative abundance of the different kinds of elements, but rather from a remarkable experiment that was being done for a completely different purpose. At Bell Labs in the early 1960s, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were building an antenna, a very precise microwave antenna, to see reflections off of echo balloons. But they saw noise in their antenna, electronic noise, and they kept trying to get rid of it. They made sure that it wasn't coming from stray radio signals. They were worried that their own instruments might be causing it, so they cooled it down with liquid helium. They wanted to make sure it wasn't coming from the Earth. And they pointed the antenna in different directions. They checked that it wasn't coming from the sun by doing the experiment at night and pointing it away from the sun and towards the sun. They checked that it wasn't coming from our own galaxy. It was a hundred times bigger than what they expected, and it was everywhere. They even climbed up and scraped off pigeon poop from the antenna in case somehow that was responsible. And while they were struggling to understand this ubiquitous noise everywhere they looked, they heard about work indicating that some kind of residual microwaves might be left over from the Big Bang itself. And when they published their results, they signaled that that was one of the possibilities. This became fundamental to a transformation in cosmology that made it not only a theoretical science, the legacy of Einstein, but also a laboratory studying the distribution of microwave background in ever finer granularity became a new way of experimentally exploring the very early universe. One of the most interesting theoretical developments about cosmology has been the idea that things learned about particle physics, and indeed connected to the Higgs particle that was recently discovered, make it seem plausible that the universe underwent a much faster initial explosive growth than the expansion that we see today, or that we could extrapolate to in an easy way from what we see today. And this very rapid early expansion, or inflation as it's called, seems to solve some of the problems that worried people in both the Big Bang and the steady state accounts of the universe. For example, if you simply extrapolate from the observed universe today, it seems that there are parts of the universe that were never in causal contact, and yet they seem to be at roughly the same temperature. And how could they have come to equilibrium if they were never in contact? If we put something in the refrigerator and the butter is the same temperature as the milk, we're not very surprised they're in contact with the same cold air. But how could things unconnected have that same temperature? Well, if there's explosive growth at the beginning, it could be that things were much smaller and therefore causally connected before they blew out at the end of inflation to the more stately pace of expansion that we know. People have wondered for a long time, how did the universe get to be so near flat? Maybe it's a little positive or a little negative, but why is it near flat? Well, again, if the universe had been much smaller and explosively grown at the beginning in a period of inflation, then maybe that would cause the flattening out of the universe more than we might expect. Or if there were tiny fluctuations at the beginning, quantum fluctuations in the very early universe, then that explosive growth could explain how they could have been bigger and we could see the fluctuations in the background and the structure of the universe that we see today. So now we can go back and look at those fluctuations, these variations in the microwave background, and use them to reconstruct the very earliest universe. If the universe, for instance, is positively curved, or if it's negatively curved, that would cause a small fluctuation to either grow bigger or to stay smaller as the universe expanded. And so we can use the appearance of those fluctuations in the microwave background that we observe to reason backwards to the beginning of the universe. And in fact, that's led with ever greater precision to an age of the universe, now estimated to be just shy of 13.8 billion years. But thinking about cosmology 
has led to other discoveries of an experimental or observational sort. One is that the old idea of the cosmological constant that tortured Einstein and his contemporaries, that led him to his anxiety about the early work of Lemaitre and the early work of Friedman, Einstein came to think that the cosmological constant was a horror eventually, and that he had made a terrible mistake in insisting on it being there as he came to accept that the universe, in fact, was not static. He even said that the idea of adding this term into his otherwise beautiful equations was one of the ugliest things. He's often paraphrased as saying the introduction of the cosmological constant was the greatest blunder of his life. But whether he said it in those words or not, he clearly came to see the cosmological constant as something that he didn't need, that the world didn't need. Well, decades later, through extremely careful observation, it turns out that the universe is not only expanding, it's accelerating. And that acceleration seems to indicate the all-pervasive presence of energy density, what's come to be known as dark energy. Or, in other words, the cosmological constant has returned. And in a certain sense, that return one of the great discoveries of contemporary cosmology may be Albert Einstein's greatest last laugh.